We learned in our last video that gasoline can vaporize and that it can vaporize very quickly. Now, driving down the road, your engine gets hot, but that's not a problem. As you drive along, the water pump moves the heated coolant out to the radiator, we can dissipate the heat. We also have a constant breeze racing through the engine bay. Now, imagine what happens when you pull up to the 7-Eleven and you turn the motor off. The water pump stops. The radiator has no breeze and no cooling fan to create a breeze. The air in the engine bay becomes static. There's no airflow. Now the engine goes through a process called heat soaking. That means that all the heat that's inside the engine begins to migrate. The coolant gets hotter than when your engine is actually running. The temperature of your engine and your engine bay gets hotter than at any other time. Our stopped car has a carburetor that's full of volatile gasoline sitting on top of this heat soaking engine. The engine bay becomes an oven. The gasoline inside the carburetor begins to boil, turning to vapor. Think about the fuel that was in the jet and it's turned to bubbles of vapor. It's gone. The float bowl is a boiling cauldron. As bubbles rise, it's nearly impossible for fuel to enter the passageway and get to the jet. So while there's technically fuel inside this carburetor, it's of no use to the engine. Vapor, not liquid fuel, is what comes out of the jet and mixes with the air entering the engine. Vapor is much less dense than liquid gasoline, so the mix entering the motor is too lean for the motor to run on. It won't start as long as the fuel is boiling. Now, while you're standing there with your hood up trying to figure out what's going on, the engine bay is venting. 10 or 15 minutes of this will bring the temperature of the fuel in the carburetor back down, the fuel will stop boiling, the jet will fill with fuel, and the car will start again as if nothing had ever happened. Now, to combat this problem, the gasoline producers change the formulations of their gasoline from season to season. This tactic works most of the time. However, if you have a tank full of gas that's been formulated for cool weather driving and we suddenly have a few hot days, or if your carburetor is exposed to more heat than it was expected, vapor lock can happen. What can you do to fight vapor lock? We'll address that in our last video.